I loved every last detail of that place, right down to the incredibly tacky swords we hung on the wall. Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 things you didn't notice in Ted and Marshall's apartment. It's a boy apartment. It's full of swords and video games and kind of smells like dude. Well, here's my comment. I love it. Really? This apartment needs some new life. So please, make our old home your new home. For this list, we'll be looking at hidden features, small details, and Easter eggs in the apartment above McLaren's that you may not have necessarily spotted while watching this hilarious sitcom. Did you actually notice any of these, or is there something you spotted that's not on our list? Let us know in the comments. Number 10. Random Bowl of Billiard Balls It's not unusual to find a decorative bowl on someone's coffee table. It's also not unusual for that bowl to be filled with something like fruit, for example. So I just happened to be in the neighborhood and I thought, man, Quinn is in such great shape, she must love fruit. However, for some inexplicable reason, in the pilot episode, Ted and Marshall opted to fill their bowl with billiard balls. Had they just been collecting them? Did they take them from the bar, perhaps? Maybe they once owned a table and the balls are all that's left? I think you'll find I'm full of surprises tonight. So there's more surprises like what? We don't have long to ponder these questions, as this random decorative feature disappeared by the following episode. The trio of small coffee tables on which it's placed is also changed as well. At least it was a great party. I ate like four whole cans of dip. Number 9. Ted's Breakup Painting For nine seasons, we watched Ted fall head over heels in love and get his heart broken. Eagle-eyed viewers with a penchant for interior design may have noticed that he has a particular way of moving on from heartache. After a big relationship ends, you need some time to recuperate. Robin took a trip to Argentina, and I went through my usual routine. When Ted and Robin break up, he decides that his apartment could use a fresh coat of paint. He also decides to redecorate after Stella leaves him at the altar. Hey pal, you wanna have a catch? I'm fine. Hey, kiddo. <sighs> Barney, I'm fine. Eventually, though, he learns that no amount of DIY is enough to heal his broken heart. Ultimately, he chooses to leave the apartment and those memories behind altogether. See, for me, this place had begun to feel a little haunted. At first, I thought it was haunted by Robin, but now I think it was haunted by me. Well, no ghost is at peace until it finally moves on. Number 8. The Origins of Teddy Westside Ted often campaigned for his friends to call him Teddy Westside with very little success. Ladies love Teddy Westside. <laughs> You're waiting for me to comment on your self-assigned nickname. <laughs> but have you ever wondered why he was so adamant about this particular nickname? As we learn from the Season 6 episode Subway Wars, Ted's apartment is located somewhere around 75th and Amsterdam on the Upper West Side. Clearly, Ted's home means so much to him that he wants to incorporate it into his nickname. Hold on, hold on! Let's just forget about it. Who cares? I mean, there's no way to find out who's right anyway. The show is loosely based on creators Carter Bays and Craig Thomas's real lives, and this address is based on their first awesomely crappy apartment after they moved to New York. It's fine for now, but when we get married, I want to start a new life with you in a new place. Gonna miss the old place. Number 7. Strategy Game Board Art This one isn't totally exclusive to Ted and Marshall's apartment. I know. <laughs> right? I'm with you, buddy. For some yet-to-be-discovered reason, there's a picture of a Chinese checkers board hanging in the gang's respective apartments throughout the series. At Robin's place, you'll notice it in the kitchen, while at Ted and Marshall's, it's hanging outside their bathroom. Maybe it's some inside joke that we're not in on, or a puzzle that we're meant to solve. That's the puzzle. To this day, it's not entirely clear what it's meant to symbolize, if anything. If anyone watching this has any idea, please share it with the group in the comments. Guys, I have an idea for puzzles. What if... What? Puzzles is it's kind, kind of, of a shared thing. vision. So. Number 6. New York Central System Poster Speaking of interesting choices of artwork, there is a poster of the New York Central Railroad system hanging up near the piano. We know that the gang is rather proud of living in New York City, 
but we imagine that there are probably better ways to showcase that pride. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna take off work Friday. We're gonna take her to the Empire State Building. Also, none of the apartment's inhabitants ever expressed a particularly keen interest in the railroad system. If anything, Ted seems more partial to buses, while Marshall would probably say he could outrun a train anyway. You can't do that. You can't beat the bus. I can beat a bus or a cab or a train. Is anyone else suddenly craving green eggs and ham? <laughs> Machines are overrated and someone needs to take them down a peg. The only feasible reason we can imagine for this choice of poster is to signify that they're proud New Yorkers. A real New Yorker would know the subway's faster, you just take the one, transfer to the two, three. Number five, the mystery table behind the sofa. No, we're not talking about the one by the fire escape. We're sure that you've noticed that one on plenty of occasions. The one we're talking about is located directly behind the sofa and is only visible from a very specific camera angle. Because you're irrationally picky, you're easily distracted, and you're utterly anhedonic. Anhedonic? Anhedonic. It means you can't enjoy anything. This means that it's often hidden by the seating arrangement in their living area, and it doesn't seem as if anyone uses it for anything across the show's nine seasons. That really steams me. That really burns me up. It's even accompanied by a chair that's also just out of view. Since the table is barely, if ever, in use, by Ted's own rulings, it should go into the Bermuda Triangle outside their apartment. The biggest rule for decluttering is, have you used it? in the last year. If not, triangle. Number four, the kitchen gets redecorated. As in real life, it's not uncommon for homes to get updated and redecorated as the inhabitants taste change and mature. A prime example of this in Ted and Marshall's apartment is the change of decor in their kitchen. I wanna drink a toast with my fiance. <laughs> Above the sink, you'll always spot a lamp a sign, and a doll. However, the details of these items change throughout the series. Full disclosure, we also used all your butter, greasing up Lily so we could see how far we could slide her down the hall. Perhaps one of the most notable changes is when an actual doll is replaced by a picture of one. If you want to see for yourself, be sure to pause an episode anytime the characters are in the kitchen and take a closer look. Ooh, someone's excited to see me. Number three, reappearing furnishings. After Robin moves out, Ted realizes that he needs a fresh start. He decides to give the apartment to Lily and Marshall, who are unhappily living in Long Island. I don't know if you know this, but I never took your names off the lease. Well, today, I took my name off it. The apartment is now yours. When they enter the apartment, it's completely empty, with nothing left behind. Yet after they settle back in, certain items seem to resurface. Even the little British phone booth that we're fairly sure was given to Ted by a former girlfriend. The fact that I still have things from ex-girlfriends is no big deal. I mean, when I see the phone booth on the piano, I don't think of Jeannie Radford. I think of the good times I had backpacking through Europe. So we have to wonder, did Ted decide that it was a bit extreme to clear out the place? Or have his friends slowly been collecting his household possessions to furnish their apartment? Guys, trust me, you're gonna want this chair in Italy. I, it'll feel like home. Number two, the changed couch. When the gang isn't hanging out in their favorite booth at McLaren's, they're usually in the apartment upstairs. The couch in the middle of their living room has been the setting for plenty of significant moments. I'm scared, Teddy. I'm scared, Teddy. It's you guys talking. It's just you guys talking. Okay. However, if you cast your mind back to early season one, you'll notice that it's not the same red couch that's instantly recognizable to fans today. Instead, they own a brown leather couch that's roughly the same size and has identical features on its arms. Oh, it is on! It is on to the break of dawn. <laughs> it seems that all that has changed is the color and material. Maybe the room just needed a touch of red to really make it pop. Boom! <laughs> oh, why? That time I was just messing with you. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, it's always sandwich time. There's a certain activity that Ted, Marshall, and Lily particularly enjoyed partaking in during their college days. But they're still not opposed to returning to their old hobby as adults either. It's all right, honey. Sandwiches are strong these days. <laughs> 
This is best reflected through the clocks in their apartment. Anytime you see one in the background, it always seems to be set to 420. And we all know what that means. Sandwiches make me hungry. <laughs> True. It's clearly a cleverly placed Easter egg by the set designers. However, we prefer to believe that the trio deliberately sets their clocks this way, so that no matter what, it's always time to eat a sandwich. Excuse me, we're in our 30s, we don't smoke sandwiches anymore. Sandwich brownies? Okay. Mm -hmm. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.